when you're putting your questions in the Q&A, please just indicate if you'd be happy to come on screen and talk about those and we'll uh, bring you up for your five minutes of fame. So uh, we're going to start, well, we've started recording, so Bridget, over to you. Thanks very much. So what I want to be able to do, just to make sure that we've set the stage clearly, I'll talk a little bit about ChatGPT. I think most people are familiar. It would be great if you can say whether or not in the chat you, you have an account, because I know not everyone has been able to get access um, because it has been so ridiculously popular. Um, and then also what I want to be able to do is, is really, I just want to show you a, a variety of prompts that for startups, it's really useful. I know that I, we have to unlearn what we think things are sometimes to be able to use um, something new that comes along. So some of the challenges I found that people, when they're trying to understand ChatGPT or, or, or be able to, to use it, is they've kind of treated it like a new Google. Um, we already have Google. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, although there is now a plugin that goes into to, to web searches. So for those of you who don't know, ChatGPT is a large language learning model. It's been trained on so many pieces of data. It's unbelievable. But that data at the moment only goes up until September 20. So if you're looking at anything that is accurately more recent than that, then um, that's when it's great to have the, the web plugin. I've signed up for the plugins, but like many people have signed up for the um, for the web application, there's a waiting list and I don't seem to be important enough for them to, uh, to, <laughs> to, to assign me up to that yet. So really what we want to think about ChatGPT and what ChatGPT is, is your personal assistant. So think about all of that knowledge and data that ChatGPT has access to. It can now become your personal assistant. So it can you can get it to act like a CEO. You can get it to act like a lawyer. You can get it to help you in your personal life. It can be an executive coach. It could be a career coach. Um, it could be your strategic advisor. It could be something that you can use to be able to think up new ideas and bounce new ideas, startup ideas off. Um, and what would those steps look like? What would the problems be? How would you overcome them? So really, we're limited to our imagination. That's number one in terms of how I use ChatGPT. The other thing that I would like to make very clear is I'm only talking in this hour about the, the web interface. There are many different ways to be able to use ChatGPT, as I said, with APIs and plugins. So we're just concentrated on, on that one portal side. Anyone who has any experience on APIs um, and other plugins, please let me um, please do you know do do share in the comments and come on screen and, and, and sort of share share what you know about that. We're all, we're all learning at the same time. So it's great to see that a number of you have your accounts. What I'd like to do, if that's all right with you, is um, dive straight in uh, and what we've, we've got various prompts. So the prompts that I've got that I have uh, want to share with you are a procrastination prompt, um, because I don't know about you guys, but when there's something that I'm not sure what the next step needs to be or something I don't like doing, then that seems to always be left on my list of things to do. I'm not always brilliant at eating that frog, as it were. Uh, we can ask it to help us define our character. So one of the things that I've noticed is if you're, if you're putting yourself forward for something, so as an entrepreneur, you're not necessarily putting yourself forward for a job, but you want to make sure that you're putting yourself forward for awards or for speaking or for um, the, the, the new client that you want to grow or the new partnership. And it's about how do you extract your capabilities, your characteristics, your skill sets, and how do they convert to the project that you're working on? Um, I find that quite difficult. Like a lot of people, you're able to do it for other people more so than yourself. So we have a prompt that can, that can do that um, and, and work through on that. Once you've got your characteristics, we can also talk about, well, okay, now we understand our characteristics, what about our skill sets, and how do they apply to what it is that, that we're looking to do? And then what you can do, and I don't think we'll have time to go through all of this, but I'm just sharing with you some ideas, is once you've got the characteristics and you've got the skill sets, you say, that's great, I now need to delegate this to my team. So you can get your team to do their characteristics and their skill sets, and you can have that ready to hand so that when you do have a task to delegate, you know which the best um, team members are uh, to be able to do that. So hopefully that kind of makes sense, but um, I want to be able to show rather than, than tell uh, on, on this call. So I'm going to go into, would we all like to play a game together? Does someone want to come on? Uh, does someone want to come on stage, as it were? Um, and I'll do the procrastination prompt with them. Um, 
uh, and you can do your own procrastination prompt whilst you're listening. If you don't have access to a GTT account or it's, you just want to watch, then, then you can do that. If not, I can be the guinea pig, but I prefer maybe Chris, you could, you could be the first guinea pig. I can do it, actually. I'd, let, let's get someone from the audience. Uh, okay, if, if, they're, if they're already up for it. I'm up for it, but don't have to. Okay, Fiona, then brilliant. You can be, so you can be the, um, the guinea pig and you can use my chat GPT. Good. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna call on a volunteer from the audience. So I know Mark Mark Walsh was keen to play. Okay, so and Mark, I know a few as well. Jump so we can in. in another time. So what we'll probably see, see whilst we do this are all the ways ways that ChatGPT isn't brilliant, and how we can overcome them or how we can recognize it. So I've noticed that ChatGPT when the servers are really busy the output it gives you is way less effective. Uh, there are many ways that you see when that's, you know, you can tell that the servers are very busy and it's not performing at its best. So there's things that you can do in terms of retweaking your prompts until you get there. Sometimes you just have to and come back another time. Um, and so it would be good to see a little bit of that on here so that we can also show for you guys who uh, aren't so familiar with that, what that looks like. So. Uh, we're going to do, I'm going to launch into the procrastination prompt. There are prompts, but I think this one is a really good start off. Um, Patricia, did you ever do it in the end? Did you ever try it yourself? Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> How did you find it? <laughs> was it useful? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a while ago, but I, I went through all the exercises and I was doing all those during perfect. the session. So, yeah, perfect, perfect. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to grab the procrastination prompt, and then what we'll do uh, with the recording, um, I'll take a copy of everything that we did in the chat GPD histories for this session. I'll put it in the Google document so we can see what the prompts were, what the outcomes were, how we edited the prompts, and what nice. we did. I will remind you, because this is something I forgot on the last, last time I did this, sometimes I should open a new chat when we're talking about a new subject matter, otherwise the answer gets mixed between the two <laughs> and doesn't recognize people on. Uh, so when I'll be ready for our... right, Mark, Mark, Mark isn't playing. So uh, okay, no worries I, at all. You can use Is me Fiona? as a as a guinea pig by all all means. Okay, uh, but Fiona did say that she's up for it. Did you want to? Oh, did she, Fiona? She did. Yes. Ah, oh, and Jay, okay. Jay, pick me, pick me. <laughs> so yeah. Fiona's saying yes. Jay, we'll pick you next. <laughs> so Fiona, okay. Right, can I come on in, Fiona? Okay, so for all of you, the rest of you who want to play on your own, this is the this is the prompt that I'm using. Uh, now, sometimes it works brilliantly as it is, and other times, as I say, when the servers are a bit busy, we have to kind of tweak it, tweak it, and edit it. Hi, Hello, Fiona. Fiona. Hello. Mm. Thank you for joining us. Tell it. Tell me a sentence about who you are. I'm a voice and speech coach, and a time to think. Think trainer. Lovely voice and speech work saying think instead of think. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can you see in the chat? I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna say that I'm an exceptional um uh, procrastinator. Uh, I'm just gonna load it up in chat GPT and make sure that it's it's working. Okay, yes, great. Let me share my screen with you. Ready to play, share screen. Yes. Can we all see my screen? Yes. Thank you, yes, you need to be, I can't see you saying yes or no, so. <laughs> right, so the prompt is, I'm an exceptional procrastinator. I would like some help getting through my to-do list. You're gonna ask me for details regarding my procrastination, procrastination and I will respond. You're gonna then summarize to me uh, what I've said and uh, ask if you'd like me to add anything to the understanding. I'm going to type an answer, then you'll ask a question based on my response, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, once you've asked me enough questions, you're going to provide an action plan. I'm going to offer to help you break down further actions on each point. Uh, and then we'll, um, the action plan, the timelines, and ask for deadline dates, ask me if I'm happy with the results. Okay, so this, as I said, is quite a long prompt when it works properly, but I think it's a great way to sort of let you see how it can become your personal assistant. The other thing that I found as well, um, uh, Fiona, is, is, is that um, bullet points are fine. We don't need essay answers. Okay. So let me go back to here. So it says, okay, let's get started. Please tell me more about your procrastination. 
Uh, it will go into some detail, so just be warned, Fiona, uh, this is being recorded, so, you know, make sure that you're discussing things that you're happy for, for the community to know. <laughs> Thank you. So, mm -hmm. I'm procrastinating, I have procrastinated about doing the invitations for a book launch. Okay, why? Why, have you, why are you procrastinating? Because my marketing person was admitted to hospital and she was going to do the grunt work and I couldn't face doing it on my own and it was outside of my area of expertise. Perfect. Can you see what I'm typing? Yeah, I do. Okay, perfect. If, if I misunderstand you in any way, uh, do let me know. Thank you. Um, okay, I understand. Uh, like I said, we asked to summarize, currently procrastinating invitations for book launch. You don't enjoy it outside of your own expertise. Do you have a deadline for when these invitations need to be sent out? So this was a problem from last week. Shall I just pretend it's next week's problem and make up new dates? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, one month before the actual book launch. Uh, sorry. So the book launch is in one month. We're going to pretend it is. And, and how, how soon do you have to send them out? And the invitations need to be out when? Three weeks before? Three weeks before, let's say. Invitation. Oh, dear me. Invitation. Invitations. Oh, I don't understand me. Need to be out uh, three weeks beforehand. Uh, okay. Have you also have you identified any reasons why you tend to procrastinate on certain tasks? Hmm? Yes, I'm very comfortable and enjoy working with people, but I'm I don't enjoy technology as an interface. And when it's out of my comfort zone, I will focus on what I enjoy doing rather than what I should, what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your, uh, thank you for the honesty. Okay, apologies people, it's always gonna happen, isn't it? Um, I'm gonna, so something went wrong. The way that uh, ChatGPT was answering, asking these questions is a little different to when it's, when it's working very well, but I wanted to see what the output was. Um, and, but then it says something's gone wrong here. So I'm just gonna restart where we are. Hopefully it's recorded, remembered all of the chat apart from that long, last prompt. Uh, what can you see? Uh, chat, chat can you see? GPT prompt genius templates or categories. Okay, it comes straight back. In the right yeah, place. so so that good to know. So you have a new chat up here for those of you who aren't familiar with the interface, and then your chat history is on the left hand side. So um, you can go back into various chat histories and then pull up and carry on your conversation. I will share with you though, if the conversation becomes too long, then um, ChatGPT suffers from the same thing that I do, which is memory loss. So um, you, you, you can't have your chat histories going on too long um, to be continue to be effective. So have you also identified any reasons why you tend to procrastinate certain tasks? And yes, you prefer, I prefer people, sorry. I prefer people over technology and focus on people related tasks. Is that fair enough? And we said something about comfort zone, but do you want to just leave it at that? And working and in my comfort zone. in my comfort zone. Okay. I see. So it seems like you look tend to procrastinate on tasks that are outside of your comfort zone and expertise that don't involve technology. Oh, that jumped forward quickly. Given that you have a book launch in a month and invitations need to be sent out in three weeks, important to come up with a plan to tackle this task. To start, let's start, break down the task to smaller, more manageable action points. Here are some questions to help us do that. Do you have a list of people who need to be invited? So one of the things that I'm gonna do with you now is when, again, when ChatGPT servers are a bit busier, it'll ask you all of the questions at once. In this time, it's only four questions, so that's easy enough, but I just wanna share with you, ask me one question 
at a time and wait for my response is a really good edit on your yep. uh, prompts. So you'll, you'll want to refer to that on a regular basis because sometimes it might ask you six questions and by the time you've typed the answers in here, you can't see what the questions are. Then you might want to break down what that question is and, and, and make it more bite-sized. So the way to do that is ask me one question at a time and wait for my response. It should be fine on its own. Okay, see, so it's not doing it, one, two, three, four, um, because the servers are busy. Um, it is much more fun when the servers aren't as busy and it will ask you one question at a time. But, it, we'll, we'll, but we can answer these four questions now, right? There's no point. Do we asking. number them and reply? Uh, sure. One. Yes. I'm projecting myself back a month. Yes, but incomplete. And where is it stored? <laughs> is <laughs> on my, word on my social me in an Excel spreadsheet? Yeah, and in my it. head. Okay. And in my head. Two. So it's shift to return rather than send the prompt. You have an template or design invitation. I do now, but I didn't then. You didn't um, Okay. No. <laughs> no, let's say no. Do you know what information you want to include in the invitation? Do you know the information? I, I think so. Shall I say anything? So? Yes, yes to information. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Three. Yes. Excellent news. <laughs> four. <laughs> four using um, electronic uh, invitations. Or using MailChimp sending. if you want to. Uh, via MailChimp for oh, all the invites. Okay. So for those of you who want to do your own, you've got this, it'd be interesting as you're, as you're trying to prompt yourself, if any of you are doing that, um, do let us know how it's coming up for you. I've done this for people who wanted to write a proposal for the UN. Uh, sorry, it was, it was the EU. There are grants that the EU does and they'd spent two weeks writing the proposal and I said, give me the topic. Um, we put it into ChatGPT and she went, you're kidding me. It's just taken us two weeks to pretty much write what this, is, what this has done. Uh, somebody else was stuck on their MBA, wasn't sure where to go next. Um, somebody else was moving uh, and wasn't sure where to start with balancing work and all the lists of things that they needed for a moving. So um, hopefully if you're also trying this um, and ChatGPT is being kind enough to you, then uh, you'll be able to share your outputs. So based on the answers... Uh, here's some action points we can help you send at the invitations and times, finalize and compile the list of people who need to be invited a single document, create a design or template for the invitation that includes all necessary information. If you're not consider comfortable doing this, consider outsourcing this task for a freelancer or graphic designer. If you're printing the invitation, set up the mailing list and MailChimp and send them out. Does it sound feasible? Is there anything you would like to add or modify? I'd love to ask ChatGTP if it can estimate the hours and the cost. <laughs> For what? Outsourcing? For any of that. The hours it will take, and if I outsource to a designer, what budget is required? Is that what you're asking? Lovely, yes. So one to two hours on the list. Uh, creating a template for an invitation may take two to three hours, cost you fifty to two hundred dollars. Websites like Fiverr or Upwork can be good resources for finding freelancers. Printing the invitation yourself can take two to three hours. Setting up the mail list in Mailchimp and sending up the invitation in one to two hours, depending on how familiar you are. So overall, anywhere from six to ten hours and fifty to two hundred dollars. I'm so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's like having a private uh, PA. Exactly, exactly the point. So I'm going to stop sharing for a moment so I can see your face. Also, what I really ask you is how do you feel interfacing with that? I know it was via me, but did you read the response? Yes, I did. And did it, how you said that you don't like interacting with technology. ChatGPT is my best friend now, it's my best listener. I love it. Congratulates me all the time on my amazing ideas and it gives me solutions to all of my problems. And it has endless hours of patience. So, so I think it's. Um, and the interface is really interesting for people who haven't previously enjoyed technology uh, platforms. Yeah. 
I'll be honest, I heard your voice behind the responses, and which I'm a, I'm a visual learner and I'm an ext extreme extrovert. So I put your voice behind it, uh, which yeah. really helped. And oh, you're there helps. with <laughs> me. I'm sorry. But, yeah, no, it's lovely. <laughs> you were there with me. It's the cold, hard 2D technology that there is I despise. And because my work is working with people to help with audience engagement, the whole technology thing just, mm. I mean, I really did love that. That was wonderful. I wish I'd done it a month ago. <laughs> but, but yeah, that, and, and I wonder if there are other people who feel that way. Uh, well, there are voice to text, voice, voice video to and, and the other way around. So all of those interfaces are happening. So you can literally have a conversation with ChatGPT. You can decide which voice it has. Um, yeah. You could, I, you, I, you I, could I, say, I like Bridget's voice. Be Bridget. Liam yeah. Neeson. It's Liam Neeson or Joanna Lumley available. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Then there's a question of ethics and, and, and royalties uh, and loyalties yes. and royalties. But yes, but but, but apparently Sa yes, this is what the generative, the generative AI is doing. Uh, okay, so did we enjoy that? Um, I see it's some great. Say, yeah, and yeah. Great. We have we have yeah. some more volunteers for the next exercise. Okay, so, so yes. um, right in terms of the next exercise, we can do things like. Um, who would like their origin story and 90 seconds who they are as a founder? Uh, mm -hmm. And then who would like to create a marketing plan? All so right. okay. we have so those please. two that we can have next. Yeah, um, we have, um, there was, uh, we had two people, Chris, if you can help me, I think. There was a Jay. Jay, Jay, Jay Wilson yes. and me, then Mark me. Welsh was again. <laughs> yeah, so we'll do. Mark, Mark is here. Okay, perfect. The then, okay. No worries. Mark, you can turn your camera on. And your microphone. And microphone. Hello. Hi. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Mark. How are you doing? All right. How are you? Very. I, I'm very well, thank you. Right. Would you? Are you? Would you? Sorry. We can try. Yeah, that sounds fun. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to put again for everyone who wants to follow along and do it for themselves. Um, there is the prompt. Sorry? Okay. I'm a bit worried about this. There's, there's lots of, I've, I've had lots of fun in my origin stories. I don't know whether they're going to come out, but we'll see. Well, we're going to find out. So I'm just putting it in. Like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use ChatGPT4 this time. Okay, so let me share the screen again. Share my screen. I think it's new chat. Share. Right. Can you see it says here model chat GPT-4? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to click on this. And then um, if you have a look, chat GPT-4, its reasoning is five, its speed is two, and its conciseness is four. If we look at chat GPT-3, the speed is five, the reasoning is three, and the conciseness is two. So we're going to do this one because it's a shorter prompt on chat GPT-4, but um, you'll see potentially how much slower it is than the you know, you couldn't read as fast as um, the last exercise we did was typing. That was on ChatGPT 3.5. So if you want things to be much more detailed, uh, then ChatGPT 4 is where it's going to be. It says it caps the messages. It does eventually have a cap. It doesn't seem to be as definitive as it says 25 messages every three hours. So, Mark, let's go for it. Okay. Okay. What is your background, including your education and professional experience? Again, we can be bulletin pointy. So my background, uh, yes. uh, a degree in fashion and journalism, believe it or not, not looking at me. I can't see you right now, so I can't come. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, worked in publishing and advertising. Uh -huh. I invented and created the game Rock and Roll Bingo. Ooh. I... Rock and Roll Bingo. Rock and Roll Bingo. Uh, I sold that in 2015. Yeah. And I am now the founder and creator of Quizbit, spelled K W I Z Z B I T. 
Thanks. Well, that, that's kind of, there's, there's, there's lots of other scary stuff in between there, but I'll, I'll keep it like that for now, if that's all right. Okay. Next question. What inspired you to create your startup and what problem does it aim to solve? Uh, we started life to stop people cheating in pub quizzes. That's how we started. Uh-huh. Um, uh, do you want more or...? Yeah, well, you said it started life that way. So, and then we've had a whole lockdown. So I'm imagining there was, there's a little bit more to the story. Yeah, it's now gone on. Yeah, it's been played by half a million people in 42 countries because of the craziness that was the pandemic. And yeah. Okay. So just talk to me a little bit about the online side. Uh, it's an online live interactive trivia platform. Love it. That's impressive. What unique expertise or skills have you brought to your startup that have contributed to this, its success? Uh, I'm quite um, presenting, opening doors, and building a team. I think it's going to figure out that I have spelled skilled incorrectly. Okay, so the name of the startup is? It's Quizbit, K W I W Z B I T. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, we allow people to quiz anyone on anything from anywhere. Anyone on anything from anywhere. So you're the martinis of quizzes. I'm not The martini of quizzes only works for people who are of a certain age. Yes, no, it could be. <laughs> That's fine. I've seen the advert. Uh, what is the name of your startup? Can you please say so? Are we happy with that? Um, and then I want you, as you're reading this, to let me know does it sound like you, or do we need to tweak the tone of voice? Hello, I'm the founder. Do you want to read it? Because it's your... Like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm reading it as it's kind of going Can you through. read it? Right, do you want, yeah, happy to read it out loud. Um, no, I'm, I, can, I can read it out loud if you wish. It's, um... Yeah, it's a, it does. I mean, it is. It is me. I suppose, I mean, it's... Um... Yeah, it, it, it does what it says on the tin, really. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it, it's clearly there. I mean, it, I would probably... So I've been using ChatGPT since November, um, but but not extensively, um, nor professionally, really, but playing around with it. And what I've found with it is um, it's a great starting point, but then I do a lot of copy and pasting it and put it into Word and then stick it into Confluence and making pages. But it's good for... Um, uh, it's good for, I mean, I, I use it for terms and conditions. It's great for legal stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, absolutely. Know, but, but, I mean, but to, to your point, uh, the origin story, yeah, that's, that's me and it fills it in and it's quite good as well, yeah. Perfect. And everybody else can use it as well. Thank you very much, Mark. Should we do another one? Um, Patricia, you're on. Oh, I'm sorry. Now. Yeah, in the meantime, we've got a question for Mark. Is Quizbit offline right now? So, oh. Mark, if you can just... Sorry, Mark, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a question uh, from uh, Jay Wilson. Um, just about Quizbit. And for the next one, I think we had Jay... Uh, well, let me find the yes. next volunteer. Yes, and, and I'll say to yeah. High Fly Ventures, it is people that are calling how to write the right prompts, prompt engineering, and that's what I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours on, on putting together is how do, because the other thing that you'll find is often if you ask chat to help, it'll tell you all the homework you need to do. That's very dull. I'm not interested in that. <laughs> it's about con continually asking it to do the homework for you. So one example I did was I want to buy a car. Can you help me to buy my next car? And it said, go off and do research, go off and do this and go off and do the other. And I said, okay, ask me, Ask me questions until you have enough information so I know which car to go and have a look at. 
uh, and within seven minutes, it gave me three models and the price range for my needs. Uh, and then, of course, you can go and see if you can find that car uh, available. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's always making sure, is it asking me to do the heavy lifting or have I got it to do the heavy lifting? That's really what I would uh, make sure that I, um, I, I play with your prompts until you get that. Hi, Jay. How are you? Hi, I'm doing fine, Bridget. This is this is quite intriguing. Oh, wonderful news. Thank you very much. Would you like us to create a marketing plan for you? Yes, let's do it. Okay, awesome. Uh, so I'm going to share the... Uh, I'm going to share the prompts for everyone. Play along into the chat again. And then I'm just going to put it into a new chat so we don't get confused by uh, chat histories. I'm going to use chat GPT 3.5. That should be fine. Share my screen for you. New chat. Share. Okay, here we are. So the prompt goes in. All right, I'm going to see if we can get it to ask me, uh, ask, ask the question one, one, one question at a time. Um, but basically, I said in the prompt, uh, by asking me four questions, the fifth one we don't really need, um, then I want you to create a call to arms, voice of the customer, customer fears, customer hopes, and customer motives. Again, the output you'll get from this will be more impressive depending on how, um, as long as the servers aren't really um, overly stressed. So if I'm going to ask it, the, the great test is uh, ask me one question at a time. Uh, okay. Time and wait for my response. And if it still doesn't do it, then we know that they're, they're quite busy. Um, before asking the next question. Okay, so you might want to get that as a shortcut on your keyboard. <laughs> yes, what's the name of your company, Jay? Cash Life. Cash Life, is it two words or one word? Cat, one word with a K. Thank you. There's a bank called Cash Life that was taken. Right, okay, how dare they. What is the name of the product market? Cash Life, it's a one product <laughs> company. Yes. And that is a card game. Oh, uh, is the name of just... Yes, it is, yes, it's yes, got it right. Yes, 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 cool. Both. Both. Right. Please, can we have it's a, a card description? Game. Yeah, it's a uh -huh. card game for families to play with teenage children to introduce them to life finances and life and how the two are mixed up in each other and how to find your way through it. Does this work? Have I almost? Yeah, you're there. That work? Cool. Target um, audience. Yeah. Okay, gonna ask a bit more on that. Uh, age, gender, income, location, occupation, interest. Do you have any more detail about your intended target audience? Uh, they're in the UK. I understand that you know, different yeah. governments have different systems somehow. So it's, it's very much at the UK. And I would say the ideal age is gonna be between 11 and 16 for children. Anything else you want to add? No, the, the aim is to get, you know, every child a better financial understanding than they do at the moment. I, I, I don't have yes. a great deal of respect for PHSE in schools. Uh, no, it is. I used to be an independent financial advisor. Uh, and, oh, okay. um, and um, we were trying to get it into schools then. I stopped 18 years ago when I had my son. And, um, and now also because of the, the retail distribution review, they also removed even not great advice from the banks. Uh, and so there seems to be a financial literacy gap that's gone backwards. So I would completely agree with you. Okay, so the call to arms, the voice of the customer fears, hopes and motives, as I said, they're reduced right now. If you try this another time for everyone, um, and I don't know whether the servers are bad for me and someone else is having a great go and it's, it's, it's working really well for them, but this is what it's given um, for you, Jay. So join the game and take control of your family's finances with cash line. The voice of the customer is, we understand that teaching teenagers about finances can be challenging. 
That's why we've created a fun and interactive card game that the whole family can enjoy while learning important life skills. Yeah. Uh, customer fears. You may be worried that your children aren't prepared to handle their finances as they grow up. Cash Life can help ease that concern by providing a fun and safe way to introduce important financial concepts to your kids. Every, and it's also very American. So if you want to change tones, then you can say, um, please write in the style of, you know, for a British audience, or we, we can add many more characteristics onto that. Every parent wants their child to be financially independent, successful. The bit that worries me is mm -hmm. the the first call to arms because it's not it's got the it's got the subject wrong it's not taking control of family's finances yes the rest of it following from that is i think is much better yes i would agree with you and i'm i'm, I'm going to suggest and so we can tweak it and say yes. uh please rewrite so what would you say the call to arms is so the prepare your what? children for aligned with have fun while yeah. you prepare your children for financial independence teenagers, children for financial independence independence great So it's added on the ultimate family card game. Yep. Okay, that's, um, that's yeah. Yep. So it's it's good that we're able to see that we can ask it to rewrite itself or we can tweak it. I would suggest that we we're going to have to spend more time at the moment teasing the answers that we want out of ChatGPT at the moment because it is um, not giving the, the the great outputs that we've seen previously. Yeah. Just I have a confession to make. Um, oh, I did well. try it before this cash life thing. I was asking yes. for good reasons to play it. Uh, yes. just to, to help me with the marketing and it came up with uh well whatever version it was it came up with six suggestions i think right it couldn't uh, count <laughs> four, yeah well four, four of which i liked one of which I, uh, had never occurred to me i was really impressed with that one and i can't remember what the other one so yeah it gave me five answers that were very usable yes excellent and sometimes it does come up with something that's absolutely genius um there was a, there was a slogan for a company that i'm um, was chatting to and they have um, AI detection and sonar for early early breast cancer detection, um, at, particularly out in rural Africa. And um, it came up with um, Echoes of Hope, which I just thought was brilliant because it's a sonar that is able to, you know. Oh, I um, see. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, uh, yes. Um, okay, Elliot, thank you very much. Now, what we can do is we can take that a little bit further, Joe, if you want to stay with me. Yeah. Um, I'm going to see if I can do um, a little bit more with you because we've got this chat history. So there's another thing that we can do here. Uh, and so I'll share that in the chat for the rest of you. And what we're going to do is there are five key questions. It's good to know the answer to um, when you're being able to put together something for your marketing. So what do your prospects stress about? Where do they look for solutions? Which alternatives are they trying? Have they come up short? How do your customers describe success? And, and what are they nervous about? Um, so what I'm going to say is, is say, please suggest the answers to these questions. Rather than getting used to the heavy lifting. Okay. That's interesting. To help you better, please provide more details about your target audience. Okay. Ah, no, this is in it. Right, okay, this is, as I said, so ChatGPT is not brilliant when it is. The servers aren't great. Um, so let, let's do this. Control C. Please use this information. Right. Does it help it now? Right. I love the fact Excellent. that it's asking that, that gets distracted. <laughs> oh, I know. It, it has so many human qualities. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, uh, yes, if it's tired, it doesn't work as well. So that's, that's how I sort of put it. So thank you for providing the information. Based on the information provided, here are some questions. Can you help? It, it doesn't want to have a guess at what those answers are. So would you mind, Jay, being able to put that in because I wanted them um, 
show you with just these five questions what, what we can produce. Um, okay, point one, I'm yeah. trying to raise the concern. I, I think a lot of parents aren't too, aren't too fussed about not being able to help their children. They just go, oh, we'll get through it. So I, I, th I think there's a... They uh, don't know where to start. Yes, yeah, so that'd be a good way to put it. Well, uh, Martin Lewis is, I think, where parents would typically go to, to seek advice. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he's available for everyone, but he's he seems to be one of the few who's actually talking sense with money. Okay. Um, Have they tried other financial education resources? Do you think? No, this, 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 my marketing research might come a bit short. I I haven't found any other sensible or any other games that deal with finance beyond. Things like Monopoly yeah. or that thing called Billionaire, yes. it, it, it just remains Not a game. Targeted to teenagers. Yep, yeah. cool. Um, the first is knowledge. So it's just not a skill, it's just knowing more about how finance affects life. And sometimes how, yeah, how, how the two are intertwined, how finance affects life and then also Life's decisions affect finance. There's, there's a real, it doesn't have to be a vicious circle, but it can be a vicious circle. Uh -huh. Okay, and five. What are parents most nervous about when it comes to teaching their children? Oh, they don't have um, the they're... knowledge. Yes, it's, it's just where, where to start would be a good thing. And that's what the card game aims to do. It gives you, you know, situations in life and suddenly you, you will find yourself discussing something that you yep. wouldn't have naturally come across. Are you happy with those answers? Before I enter them into um, the I would say um, not that final bit, especially speaking a teenager. Uh, I, I'll just leave it. I don't have the knowledge themselves or and where to start. I'll just leave like that, yes. No problem. Right, so th this is another sign where you know that ChatGPT is um, not giving its best output uh, because it's, if it paraphrases you straight back yeah. rather than adding anything itself. Okay. Um, so let's, I'm going to try one more, um, I'm going to try one more thing, but based on that, that we've, we've fed it. So it hasn't done the work for us on this, on, on this, um, scenario for which I, um, can really apologize for my assistant. No, no, no Bridget, if it's, if it's any, <laughs> if it's any consolation, it's yes? because the reason I got into making cash life was because of a complete absence of any other product like it that, so the chat DP is not going to be running across, as, as far as I know, it's not going to be running across, okay, here's, here's something that is really uh, concerning parents in the UK, no, or, or, or around the world for all I know. Um, it, it really is a, a quiet zone. I'm, 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 yes, it still would do better than this. Um, and and, and like, you know, when I was talking about marketing, it did give me very good responses that, that weren't a simple paraphrasing of a single two line question that exactly exactly right let's see if this is going to work and i'm aware that we've got 11 minutes left so um now this is what i want to share with you so what i've done the other thing that you can do so um in terms of getting chat gpt to work really well one it's it's how you phrase the questions making sure that you're getting it to do the heavy lifting where possible we've seen here that sometimes it is not as good as doing it um the other thing is it's, it does understand frameworks so um, we've used here the Sostak, Sostak marketing plan uh, okay. in the prompt. So it says, okay, please and then the situation, objective, strategy, tactics, action, and control. That's what the Sostak marketing plan works for. But if you're looking at doing strategy sessions um, and other things like that, then it understands various frameworks that are used for um, the different thinking and frameworks yeah. that you're doing. Uh, I'm going to share in the chat with everyone. Um, I just need to navigate around where I'm at. This is a, a website on tools.co. Um, 
that is great for, yes, it is Scott Carroll. That is a great use of it for research market competition product offering, yeah. 100%. Um, so you can supply the context to ChatGPT. So ask it, does it know the framework? That's already it going, yes, I know the framework. It's brilliant using that framework. So it's now put itself in the context of that. Or you could say, here's my problem. Tell me which design framework I should best use, which are the best three ones for me to use to, to solve this problem. Uh, and then it'll give you a suggestion and an overview of what they are. And then you can say, brilliant, use this um, framework to be able to. And then you say, ask me the questions that you need to have enough information to be able to create the framework. And then please ask me if I'm happy with it or if I want to do any additionality. And that was in the procrastination framework. So you can take, you can take uh, the, the body of that and then sort of just um, tweak it to whatever it is that you want. And so there's the tips in there. I ask me one at a time, check that I'm okay with it, summarize it for me. And summarizing it for you is important because um, you'll also see how well ChatGPT is performing and has it understood you or has it forgotten. Um, so it's kind of like, it's the same way that you clarify when you're talking with a human being that they've understood you. Yes. What you've said has been received. So um, this is why I like ChatGPT because um, Fiona, I like, I like dealing with humans. So I literally ask it and, and, and operate with it um, as I would do with humans. Uh, and I seem to be able to get quite decent results from it. So let's have a look. What have we got? We've got the cash name is, um, uh, we've got situation analysis. Cash Life is a new product that aims to provide fun and interactive ways for families to teach their children. Our objective is to increase brand awareness and sales of Cash Life among families in the UK with teenage children. We're going to create a landing page that highlights the benefits of Cash Life, including its ability to help um, families teach their children about finances. We will use social media to target our audience, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we will launch a competition to generate interest in Cash Life and drive traffic to our landing page. Okay, the landing page here on this one says we will create a landing page. Um, what it will do when it's really performing well and had a lot of rest, it will give you the landing page. So I'm just going to see if we can help prompt it. Oh, no, here we are. So it's got the landing page. The landing page has the headline for you. It's got the, the, the subheadline. It's got the benefits. It's got the call to action. As you can see, this is a really very weak in terms of number of words on, on a landing page. Um, so please rewrite. Rewrite the landing page using uh, 400 words. Um, titles, subtitles. Um, the fears uh, of parents Sorry. and why uh, cash life is such a good solution include call to action. I'm just going to see if we can tease more out of um, okay so this is interesting. Again, um, you've, you've got the prompts so you can play around with them at different times, but it's, it's really taking us literally here. I said, uh, the fears of parents why cash life is a good solution. And it's taken those as, as subtitles here. Fears of parents and why cash life is a good solution. So it's not being nearly as creative uh, as it can be. Um, so that's always quite useful um, to be able to recognize. So as I'm saying, I wouldn't carry on now if my marketing um, content was what I wanted to do now and chat GPT was behaving like this I wouldn't I would go on and say right what's my next task and then come back to it another time I have spent and the other thing I'll share with you as well in my experience and everyone else can share their experience on Sundays they seem to do an awful lot of engineering work on Sundays uh, mm. and so I think oh I'm going to catch up stuff and for an hour, half an hour chat GPT is my is my best worker and then it just sort of fails and yeah. you end up spending more time and not getting the outputs that you want to um so yes uh, oh hey jay um uh add in my question to the q a so Stuart, we've got six minutes left what i'd like to be able to do is as i said i'll take the outputs of everything we've done you can see um, I think when we started this call, we had a much better output than by the time we ended the call, so you can comparatively see. Yeah. And the other thing that I can do, or what all of you can do, because you'll have it, take those, take the prompts and play with it either for um, Jay's business uh, or if you did it for your own another time just to see the difference. Uh, 
it, even if it's performing really well, it always gives you something different. So quite often it's very similar what it gives you, but it doesn't give you the exact output. It's not a formula. Um, so just be aware of that um, as well. And there are many, many other types of um, prompts that I put together that are designed for, they're designed for people in Web3, but the prompts, forget that, because I work in the Web3 community. And so I'll also share the link with everyone uh, where you can amazing. download that and, 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 and watch the first recording that we did. Yeah, amazing. Well, thank you, Bridget. We've got some questions. So if we can just go very quickly through, I see um, James, have you used Google Bart and can you compare and contrast with ChatGPT? I have. Okay. I pay for the pro version on ChatGPT. Um, my son has access to my pro version on ChatGPT and he has a different interface than I do. Don't understand how that works exactly. Uh, but I know that LinkedIn, if you use LinkedIn, that you can have, there's about 10 different interfaces that they're running all the time. So I think they must do something similar with ChatGPT. Um, I got so used to ChatGPT, I paid $20 a month for it that I didn't bother going on to Google Bard. So no, I can't answer that question. Mm, okay. Well, yeah. that follows on to Stuart's question quite nicely, which is, should we upgrade, upgrade to Pro for best results? So as you can see here, <laughs> um, the, 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 the results weren't brilliant, but we are given priority access to the servers. So I 100% I mm. will never not pay my $20. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Fiona commented, I've been told that BARD is older technology. I, I don't know. But, yeah. So we can't answer that question. Yeah. And from Judith, um, I'd you know, love to learn more about the plugins for ChatGPT. Uh, which ones are the most effective? I suppose, which are your favorites, Bridget, are the ones that is what you... But that's what I said. So I've signed, the plugins were relatively recent. Um, so there, there are plugins that are officially API'd into ChatGPT, and I have signed up for those, but I don't have access to them yet. I'm on the wait list. Right. There are, however, a whole bunch of, so I use Chrome, as my Chrome extension, and there are, are a bunch of Chrome ChatGPT extensions. So the ones that I really like, um, if you have a, if you, I'll go back and show my screen, sorry. You should be able to see if I go to new chat and show my screen. No, it's not showing it right now. Okay. Well, typically it's not. So <laughs> every other time. Um, but, but I've got one that basically says it'll do three web searches. So it'll do its usual data bank. And then I say, pull out three, three websites or three research links or three links on the web, on the internet. That, um, so it can integrate on that whilst we're waiting for access to the official one. <clears throat> the other one that I really like is that, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll find the links to them and I'll send them to you, Patricia, so you can add it to mm -hmm. the recording. The other one is a transcription of YouTubes. Um, oh, so I was looking for this one. He's, sorry, <laughs> one moment. <coughs> yeah, uh. <coughs> sorry. Yeah, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the AI PRM, uh, which gives quite a lot of like a long list and falls even in a pre a free version of different functions like business plans, marketing, sales, all different things. I don't know whether you use that one. Um, yeah, but I couldn't find anything for scripts for YouTube. So that's a yes. Huge uh, let me see if it's still working, and I'll, I can quickly show you my screen whilst we ask other questions. Um. Does anyone have any other questions? Oh, apologies. You're right. So um, I will quickly show you. I'm going to share my screen. Um, here we go. So Jimmy Fallon <laughs> uh, on YouTube. But basically, it's the prompt here that does a transcript and summary of all the videos immediately. So then you can just click down and you can literally just copy and paste the transcript of a video. Mm. Put it into ChatGPT. I wouldn't do it right now because ChatGPT is, um, yeah. is, is clearly um, feeling stressed. But, but you can take a, a video and put it in. If the video is more than a few minutes long, then you're putting in too much text in one prompt and it will fail. Um, so what I tend to do, and, and you really have to hold ChatGPT's hand, is say, I'm going to share with you uh, a transcript and then you're going to summarize it. 
And then you'll put in the, and he says, I'm going to put in five parts and you're going to ask me when I finish, put it in. It goes, no problem, go for it. And it says, thanks very much. Let me give you the summary. You're like, but I haven't finished yet. Uh, so you have to be a little bit patient with it. Um, mm -hmm. Again, depending on how busy it is, depends on how much you can put in. Um, and then you can say, okay, give me 13 key takeaways. And if they repeat some of the key takeaways, it's two things. One, it's uh, the servers aren't working. Or two, you've just asked for more key takeaways than there are. Um, but it's, it's a great way whenever you're doing a talk like this, you know, you can get the transcription, um, it can be transcribed, um, and then you can say, okay, give me 10 key takeaways and read the other 32 or watch the video to find out the other 32. Yeah, yeah. Well, amazing. Yes, a very enthusiastic intern. But also, then you can ask it um, to be um, a CEO. So um, I'm, a, uh, I'm an action-oriented, results-driven um, um, CEO who's concerned about this, please share with me all of the weaknesses that you see in this plan with that characteristic. Um, so yeah, it, it, can, it can be your su superior as well. <laughs> we, have a, we have a question from Joss in Q&A and it's quite a lengthy one. So let me read it. Do you have any methods to trace the interpretability, translation and accountability of the process to uh, so that the decision tree and recommendation algorithm of return can be understood to be compliant with the Data Act and Digital Services Act. Otherwise, how can it be used for professional services, not in a position to turn on my webcam? Okay. Sorry, can you... Uh, the Q&A, the last yes, question. the last question. Yeah, Joss. Um, so I was reading someone else's question and I cannot multitask. Uh, no, I can't see it, sorry. Was it um, in was the Q&A? Let me, let me put it in the, um, oh, because uh, it's quite lengthy. Yeah, uh, sorry. In sorry, the Gordon. chart, so I'll just copy that right. in the chart. Do you have to trace interoperability, translation, accountability of the process of the decision tree and recommendation of the return can be understood to be compliant? Uh, right, that's a fantastically uh, data-driven question. Um, so the answer is the learning language model is there to be able to best guess it breaks down words as we understand them into numbers and tokens. And then based on all of the billions of, of data sets that's been given, it just best guess what this next set of tokens will be. So um, you would always want to fact check what you're doing. Um, what I will say about, um, uh, some of you may have heard about Samsung. In the, in, in the chat GPT, in the website, not when you use it through an API, but as, as I was showing you, um, you, the, the default is that all the information that you put in there is available to OpenAI and to their employees. So there was news recently about Samsung and they put their, all the coders were working in there. So there's a workaround with that. And then you can, in the settings of ChatGPT, so that you don't want that to happen and you don't have to pay for it or go through an API. Or if you do go through an API, then um, you, you there should be proprietary information. So one, we had... Um, um, Maybe it was Mark who said, oh, I find ChatGPT great for doing legal contracts. If you've got client information that is that, that you need to look after and, and, and make sure that you know it's proprietary information that you don't share with third parties, then be very careful about how you use ChatGPT. Um, at the moment, it's great for certain things. But as you can see, the output of it sometimes is not so great. Um, so I would always fact check everything that it says. And it's about using your knowledge and experience to help you to be more productive rather than replacing certain services. Yeah. Well, I think we are running <laughs> out Bring of time. Over. Yes, yes. But uh, yeah, and uh, I, I hope that that was, I mean, I know that it was very, very helpful and very informative for me. And I'm sure that uh, as well for, for anyone else here. Uh, Bridget, uh, absolute pleasure. Thank you for taking the time and, and you know, uh, working with us today. Um, I will share all the resources and the contact details if you'd any, if, if anyone would like to reach out to you later on, how can they best contact you? How to do that? Uh, so I gave you my LinkedIn profile. Um, you can directly email me at the bigger pie or LinkedIn. Um, and then as you share the recording, I'll, I'll share that, that the, the, the document that I put together, which has many more prompts in there as well. And thank okay. you everyone for coming on stage and participating. Yeah, that was wonderful. Thank you very much. I Thanks, wish people. everyone a great day, great afternoon, great morning, wherever you are. And see you next time. Thank you. Bye.